Welcome back to the news today. This is the Daily Debate. World leaders have praised the overall in U.S. policy towards Cuba, a major move that will bring to, the, to an end of uh, one uh, of the last uh, remnants of the Cold War and conclude 50 years of isolation, reversing what Obama called failed policy and an outdated approach. Some see it as an attempt to reestablish American leadership in a presidency that began with sky-high expectations and that has since been highly criticized on the foreign policy end. With me uh, tonight is uh, Mr. Hilal Schenker from Democrats Abroad Israel. Good evening. Thank you very much for coming. Good evening, Lucy. And also Owen Alterman. Good to have him back here in the studio. Good Research to see you, Lucy. at the INSS. Good evening. Thank you very much for coming. For sure. Before we will start discussing this matter, let's see what our viewers had to say. And Reed has the answer. Good evening, Reed. Good evening. So, Lucy, as you mentioned, a lot of mixed reactions here. Some people praising Obama's policy overhaul, some criticizing it, and uh, some saying that this is actually an attempt to reassert his leadership. So we asked our viewers if this actually, this decision will actually seal Obama's legacy as U.S. president. Our poll, I think, is quite telling. It's very evenly split. 50 percent said no, 45 percent said yes. Perhaps it's a little early to tell just how big of a decision this will be, how successful in the future. Our viewers uh, gave us a range of opinions. Tony said Obama ran on a campaign promise to close Gitmo. Maybe it's finally a step towards making it happen. So could this policy decision actually affect Guantanamo Bay? Mark said yes, because he was strong enough to say enough is enough. Republicans hate progress, he says. If it was up to them, we would still be the only country embargoing Cuba 50 years from now, thinking it will work any day now. A little uh, Republican criticism to match the criticism of Obama. Christian, uh, here the tide begins to turn a little bit, says the United States has just discovered that the relationship between states are interests, not feelings. When mixing up the two, it's an explosive result. So he sort of suggests Obama has been maybe a bit naive, thinking it's more about sentiment, and now has realized it's all about interest in uh, international relations. And Helen said the select few groups in power in Cuba will not relinquish control, money, and power this easily. This could be the Latin Arab Spring. So she points to the fact that we should just kind of wait and see, because uh, this might not have the results uh, so positive that everybody thinks. And uh, let's end with JR, who said Syria, fail. Iran, fail. Palestinians, fail. Cuba, success. So I think with that pretty clear question, I'll pass the question back to you there in the studio. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, Nuri, thank you very much. Cuba, fail? Or would it be a success? Owen. Well, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens. Um, I think in the rational terms, Obama's right that the policy of 55 years, which is, as he correctly said, is based on events that happened before most of us were born, um, hasn't brought out the results that were expected. Uh, on the other hand, it's unclear what this will mean. Uh, one of the, some commentators are posing the risk that this could be a situation similar to Russia, where there was quick economic liberalization, quick change, and it didn't exactly lead in the right direction. Going back to one of the comments that used the Arab Spring, actually, as a precedent. You know, I, I, it's very interesting, because we have to say that the last comment is, in one way or another, summarizing uh, the entire uh, situation <laughs> well, no, I have, right I have now. Some and... major problems with that last comment, <laughs> because to say Iran failed, I think there is still a serious chance that there will be an agreement that will prevent Iran from getting nuclear weapons. Syria failed; they removed the chemical weapons, which is a major achievement. So it's not exactly it just a record Russia of failures. Russia that actually moved, uh, you know, did the, the yeah, big moves there. And the United States together with Obama's threat to use military force, and then it worked out. You know what? I'm, I'm, I will yeah. uh, go with you, and okay. I will say, okay, he did a relatively good job in uh, Iran, in Syria, but really, is this what is going to, he wants the people to remember only Cuba as a no. major victory for the no. pol it's, foreign it's, policy? It, this is a first step on the road to demonstrating that he is not a lame duck president. He has the primary responsibility for foreign policy, and I believe that this will be a first step in a series of steps that we will see during the next two years. I was extremely excited to see this headline in the New York Times, International New York Times, with Raul Castro and Obama on the front page. Yeah, so we are on the road towards what Obama promised would be his vision of the future world. So let's try to remember what just happened just a 
few years ago, not so long, the Cairo speech coming to the Middle East, uh, giving a lot of hope, showing that it could be different here in the Middle East, and poof, it just, in one way or another, just faded away. Well, you quoted both Obama and, uh, and John, John Kerry, Kerry with the poof comment. Uh, listen, yeah, the Middle East is a complicated place, and the administration has discovered that. Uh, there's been some angles in which you could say that there's been successes in this region, and some angles where you could say that there's been failures, and that same risk is true in Cuba. And just as in, in the Middle East, where Obama, the administration, has clashed with Congress, especially on the Iranian issue, with clashes maybe still to come with the new Congress in the late winter, uh, this bill caused a clash with Congress in the Cuba issue, too. There's a lot of opposition on the Hill, a lot of it, by the way, from some of the same uh, people who are opposing Obama and Iran. And we'll have to see how that battle plays out. You know, I'm trying to think, because uh, really, let's be honest, because handling the Middle East is not that easy. It's a, and it's a hard task. So maybe it was easier for him to go to Cuba after 50 years of fighting. You know, maybe. Both sides understood that we know that the situation in Cuba is not that good. The economic situation there is pretty bad. People are looking for some kind of a solution. People there are earning something around $15 a month. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's something that and you cannot even start digesting. One, so maybe, one of the things that was already agreed upon, by the way, is to increase the remittance fees. We're very familiar with that with the Filipinos who are here. 10% of the Filipino population sending back money to support their families. Now, it's the same thing between the United States and Cuba. And now they, Cubans living in the United yes. States will be allowed to send $2,000 to help support their families, something they couldn't do before. And $2,000, it's a lot of money for families. $2,000 a month. It's, right. it's, it's a lot, a That's big right. amount of money for people yep. who are living in Cuba. So uh, let's say the look at the bright side, because the main uh, let's say side that is uh, gaining from this deal is Cuba. What is the United States gaining from this? The United States is uh, gaining the fact that it is showing global leadership. It is also, President Obama and his administration are saying, the policy of boycott for 50 years plus didn't work. It didn't change the regime. Uh, Raul Castro, Fidel Castro's brother, who is now the president, is beginning to open up. The best way to change things in Cuba is to have interaction with them, to enable American uh, values to have a direct impact. And I think another very important uh, and interesting factor is that the veteran Cuban exiles in the United States were totally opposed to this. The younger generation the ones who didn't live through uh, the Castro Revolution and the Cuban Missile Crisis, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. the Bay of Pigs, they are all for it. They are saying, I want to be able to go back and see my family. I want to go back to see my homeland. And there is also, let us admit it, a uh, political factor here that in terms of the next elections, the Hispanic vote is very important. They are the largest minority in the United States. And this goes along with the fact of uh, immigration reform, of being able to legalize the 5 million undocumented, uh, ref uh, not refugees, mm -hmm. migrant workers. And so this is part of an overall liberal progressive policy that the president is trying to So if, if we're looking like in one way or another, it is a pretty positive and and we know that the, the talks were really in a, a really sick secretive um uh in one way or another place no one knew about it about it no no one knew actually that it's it's happening so why does the the, the people or, or in the world we see barack obama as in one way or another as a failure well, we'll see. I think part of it is the record in the Middle East, which is mixed, and where there's been a lot of obstacles for U.S. policy. Uh, as for Cuba, listen, this will be applauded abroad. Uh, the main locus of opposition to it are in conservative circles in the U.S., hawkish circles in the U.S., and among parts of the Cuban-American community mm -hmm. who the, are in those the circles. Older, the veteran ones. Exactly. And yeah. also many of the politicians, including Bob Menendez, uh, right. currently chairman and, of the Foreign Relations and Committee, Marco and himself, uh, right, Marco Rubio, yeah. both of them Cuban-Americans. 
Um, in terms of what America gets from it, going back to your question, one thing that was received was the uh, release of Alan Gross, an That's American right. Jew who had been held yeah. in Cuba, yeah. uh, had been brought in a uh, gift for Hanukkah, one could yeah. say. Even. Something yes. like that. It's interesting yeah. because uh, at the same time, Cuba released an unnamed intelligent, quote unquote, intelligent asset of the U.S., and the U.S. released three Cubans. The Obama administration is saying that the trade of the three Cubans for the intelligence asset is a trade, and Gross wasn't included in that, and was a sort of separately humanitarian uh, release, which I think in Israel we would call something called an Isra bluff. Uh, yeah. For those who don't uh, know what that is, go on the internet and check it out because it fits the yeah. situation. So uh, maybe I'm trying to connect two things here. Sure. Part of um, uh, uh, Barack Obama's last decision about immigrants in the United States, maybe in one way or another, is connected to this uh, surprise uh, reconciliation. I don't, I don't see it quite that way. Um, first of all, this is a really distinct issue. I'm not sure how much Mexican Americans, the largest group of Hispanics in the U.S., mm -hmm. care about this issue. I'm not sure how much Central Americans, South Americans, Dominicans, Puerto Ricans. It's a diverse community, the Latino community, yeah. and I don't know how much that they're engaged in this issue. The Cuban American community is very, very engaged in this issue, yeah. traditionally has been the backbone of the embargo and is the reason it's been in place for so long, because, again, the veteran leadership, and I, and from what I understand, the establishment of the community is, is strongly supportive of the embargo. They're very engaged, and they all live in Florida, which is a import, very important state in presidential elections. And so that's, that's where the political angle comes in. But I think it's really distinct and not connected so much to the immigration question. How exactly it plays out politically is a very interesting question because of the polls that you mentioned uh, about the split within the community. And that will be interesting yeah. to see how it plays out in the, in the presidential cycle. Yes. I think we can also recall the fact that those who believe in conspiracy theories, <laughs> there are those who claim that President Kennedy was assassinated uh, because he came to an agreement with the Soviet Union that there would be no further attempt to overthrow Castro as there was with the failed attempt in the Bay of Pigs. We're going back to 61, 62. Yeah. And so there was this claim, and you can see it also in Oliver Stone's uh, movie, JFK, that it was the Cuban exiles together with the mafia that decided to assassinate President Kennedy. Now, I'm not saying that the, I don't believe in conspiracy theories, but there is a grain of uh, a spirit of what was the attitude of the Cuban exiles two, at two the time. Two things that I would like to try to understand in this current situation is that, one, the Guantanamo uh, status, because Barack Obama is receiving a lot of criticism about this, and okay. the second is about where would it put the Cubans who would like to leave Cuba right now, maybe to move to the United States, and um, let's say the, the, the way there is more open mm -hmm. and uh, easier. Where would it put the United States and Cuba? Well, taking the Guantanamo issue first, um, from what I understand, I don't think that that will be so connected. It's already considered, in some sense, sovereign U.S. territory in a, in a kind of gray area, which is exactly why it's being used for the purpose of holding these detainees. But it's not really governed in that sense by — it's governed where U.S. law has been at least applied for that purpose, in a, again, in a gray way. But I don't know that this will affect that so much. That base has been been running with, run by the U.S. military through this entire period. Yeah. As for Cubans being able to get visas to come to the United States, logic would, would assume that that would logic would would hint would suggest that that's something that will happen as the relationship warns uh, warms uh, in terms of them being able to come to the U.S. Potentially, sure, and uh, we'll have to see. I mean, that's part of the general process of normalizing relations. Yeah, I think I think we will see movement in both directions. I know that the younger businessmen in the Cuban community are in favor of ending the embargo and to be able to have business relations. I'm talking about the Cuban businessmen in the United States, and it would work both ways. Yeah. Uh, I would also add, since we followed the uh, sports commentator, that Major League Baseball will appreciate this as well because there are some excellent Cuban baseball players, and until now, they have had to simply uh, defect. Uh, eventually, they will be able to just simply come and play for, uh, I'm afraid, not the Brooklyn Dodgers, who I <laughs> used to root for, but for uh, everyone else. In one way or another, how do you see that this is going to affect uh, Cuba's economy? 
Well, again, I think there's a real challenge. Uh, if liberalization happens too quickly, it could be a similar situation to what happened in former communist countries, where, again, uh, certain where oligarchs and people connected to the elite are able to capture large parts of the you know the privatized government sectors uh, so but that's again a far a far more far-reaching change in the economy in the immediate term look uh, there will be more flows of money from the United States imports and exports are going to be loosened and importers and exporters Americans are going to be allowed to travel to Cuba so that'll have a positive impact if down the line there's American tourism to Cuba yeah. that could have a tremendous impact so it's nice. a potentially right. huge market for right. the Cuban uh, economy I mean, a huge destination for American tourists. So those yeah. of us holding American passports have that to look forward to. That's right. Dude. And yeah. we can say that in one way or another, Barack Obama is, um, let's say, um, doing another maybe trick to Vladimir Putin after, uh, uh, let's well, say, <laughs> Let's say that it, it, Barack Obama is not that sad about uh, about this uh, and is pretty smiling with what is happening uh -huh. right now. Okay, to Putin, but I didn't say anything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> gentlemen, <laughs> thank you very much uh, for Pleasure. coming uh, okay, to the thank studio. You. Thank you for making things much clearer. Uh, uh, we're going out for a small break, two minutes, and then we will be back for the I-24 News one-on-one. -on -one. Don't go anywhere. Two minutes, and I'll be back. Thank you very much. <laughs>